the purpose behind these letters. These letters are intended to bring enlightenment to the world generally, to enable humanity to construct a new consciousness during the next 2,000 years. These letters are the seeds of the future spiritual evolution of humankind. Note well, it is the spiritual evolution of the human consciousness that brings about the mental and physical evolution in your personal and global lives and brings humanity into ever more harmonious states of well-being. If you find this hard to believe, reflect on the past 2,000 years and see what has been accomplished since I last spoke to people in person. There has been a gradual evolutionary trend towards the brotherly love I constantly preached to the Jews. When I walked the earth, there was no such humanitarian organizations as you have now. Ambition, greed, and self-gratification were regarded as normal behavior. There was little brotherly love, even amongst the Jews, whose prophets, for generations, had exhorted them to love their neighbors as themselves. As humanity has developed its capacity for brotherly love, so has humanity made life more pleasant and comfortable for itself in the form of mutual consideration, courtesy, kindness, and in the provision of hospitals, child welfare societies, care for the aged, human rights movements, and many other institutions devoted to the improvement of the human condition. All these have been born in the hearts and minds of those who sincerely heeded my original words spoken in Palestine urging people towards brotherly love and compassion for their fellow men. The form of spiritual caring and brotherly love gained tremendous impetus in the 19th century when my words were preached with renewed sincerity and intensity from pulpits and gladly received by earnest and sincere congregations. Preachers and congregations were, by that time, spread worldwide on every continent. The Sabbath was truly regarded as a day of rest, and the thoughts of the majority of Christian people were, up, were lifted to the contemplation of the power of God. Such a worldwide cessation from normal duties and occupations meant that a 24-hour-long elevation of conscious thought towards the divine creative power created a regular and powerful human divine consciousness underpinning and interthreading human lives. Human petition drew the power of the divine into the human consciousness and human experience and led directly to growth and expansion in every facet of human life. However, people did not yet know how to mentally direct divine power into spiritual rather than ego channels of creativity. Consequently, the expansion of collective consciousness brought evil results arising out of the ego power as well as the good results produced by the spiritual consciousness of inspired and enlightened people. Note well. For this reason, I have come expressly to explain to you a vitally important fact of existence. Please read carefully. It is this. Your personal consciousness 
is entirely responsible for whatever comes into your life and personal experience. It is your personal consciousness which brings you good or evil. In your subconscious, you bring through strongly imprinted but hidden recollections of past traumas, emotions of past life or lives, which can erupt and color your present consciousness. Your specific and impassioned prayer for alleviation of some kind may be answered, but it will avail you little in the long term if your mind and heart continually operate in contravention of the universal laws of love and you live in a mindset of constant criticism. Universal laws of existence relate only to activities of consciousness and are exact and undeviating. They are not rewards or punishment from God. I repeat, are not punishment from God. They relate to the causative factor of consciousness, which attract, magnetize electrical particles that thus bond together and appear to the world as outer visible solid forms and experiences. Note well. Sometimes people make powerfully prayerful contact with the divine reality behind and within all creation. It responds, and its activity is shortly revealed as necessary improvements within the personal and national life. And people may exclaim, This is a miracle. But in the long term, the state of the personal or national consciousness will again reassert itself in the experiences and will reproduce the same negative effects in health or affairs as they did previously. You cannot effect permanent changes in your lives unless you change your consciousness. Therefore, People must pray and strive at all times to achieve unconditional love. For in the 20th century, human mental abilities outstripped their spiritual development. Scientists thought they could explain away the origins of creation and describe them to accident. As a direct result, people ditched morality and began to give way utterly to self-will. They set in motion a new momentum of menace in the world, for they began to create a new form of world ego consciousness directly in opposition to the nature of the divine, unconditional love. The human consciousness blocked the inflow of the divine. Note well, the ever-increasing lurid imaginings of a few people, which would have been contained locally a century ago, now became a contagious mental infection glorified in literature, films, theater, spreading worldwide, creating a global human consciousness similar to their own, expressed as sexual excess, violence, and perversions. This mental infection first manifests as egocentric modes of living and the creation of technical devices which have created serious health disorders, climatical changes, crop failures, environment deterioration, extinction of living creatures, and wholesale slaughter of human beings. Mental infection manifests in the human personality as deranged and destructive behavior, drug-taking, abominable cruelty and depravity, 
gangster operations, and sexual excesses. Thus has a vicious circle of malignancy and perversions of thought and activities been created by entertainment and media magnets. The purpose, to capture egocentric public vested interest. Your TV and cinema screen has become the new Bible of human behavior. Personal tragedies unknown to humankind a century ago have become rife and people live in fear of walking the streets. Households are barricaded behind high walls. Family and social problems are taken into regular public debate. And so the saga of human misery is perpetuated. This is the beast stalking your lands and feeding a miasma of beastliness into innocent minds. It will be perpetuated until my Christ knowledge is acknowledged, accepted, and lived by the majority of people on earth. Because this knowledge will show you how to get back on the true path of life in order to start creating the kind of lives you truly desire. Because I am unconditional love, I am speaking the truth which many spiritual minds suspect, but which is rejected by those who are spiritually blind at the moment. These words are not spoken to threaten or punish you, but to alert you to the source of all the unspeakable horrors which daily fill your newspapers and TV screens. It is only my love for all people that forces me to descend through the various levels of consciousness to reach the dimension of human depravity to warn you of its consequences in your present lives. Note well, important. You wonder from whence has come the HIV virus, which attacks man's precious self-defense system, the immune system, and also targets his abilities to procreate. This virus, if left to spread unchecked, not by drugs, by spiritual awareness, will wipe out the unwary. The enlightened will avoid these and other pitfalls of existence. Wake up. Realize your own strong consciousness impulses are life impulses. They are highly creative electromagnetic impulses. When they are of a virulent, violent, aggressive, murderous nature, they emit electrical particles of virulent, violent, aggressive, murderous consciousness, which take form as virulent viruses in the air, spreading from one innocent person to another. What is born and nurtured in the diseased mind eventually takes on form in the physical world. This is not punishment from God, as the churches may teach you. It is a scientific fact of existence. Therefore, it is a matter of extreme urgency for all spiritually minded people to set aside infantile imaginings to perceive clearly the truth of creation and existence.